One of the unique things about travelling Italy is that everywhere you go, there are different food and wine specialties. Whether it's a cheese fondue with egg yolk and truffles, in the style favoured by the first king of Italy, or the red wine drank at George Clooney's wedding, whether it's cow gut sandwich in Florence, or dead donkey knocky in Verona, whether it's a delicious homemade basil and olive oil ice cream, or a simple two toppings pizza in the back streets of Napoli. Everywhere you go, you'll have the chance to tickle your taste buds with something new. When we were staying at a place on Lake Como, just down the road from George's, we tried a simple yet delicious dish comprising of a trio of local caught fish. Lavarallo, topped with sliced zucchini and a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Twight shad, try saying that in Ari, lovingly encrusted with a coat of bread and herbs. And juvenile line caught trout, wearing a suit of almonds and butter. I'm salivating just thinking about it. It was wickedly divine. We were lucky to be granted access to the kitchen where we watched the chef weave his culinary magic as generations of chefs had done before him. And this is where Italians have got it right in some respects. If it tastes good, why fuck with the formula? I'd much rather a simple Italian dish passed down from nonna to nonna, generation to generation, season to season, than some modern take on a simple sandwich. Pulled pork marinated in hipster beard pubes and washed down with a new grape variety that actually falls into the basket off the vine itself. It's not hard, Jamie. Kids are fat because they're watching your damn cooking shows. What's wrong with a bit of bread and dripping? Didn't do grandpa any harm, did it? And all this talk about caveman died. Who wants to be a caveman stinking of smoke and wiping your ass with leaves? And vegans sleeping.